Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. Okay, so we are here in the Great Bay Coast area. We have uh, just recently saved Macau from his, uh, well, I guess we didn't really save him, but we did at least heal his sorrows anyway, so he could, you know, die peacefully, which is still a little sad when you think about it. But anyway, in his uh, last number, he requested that we look for some Zora Singer Girl's eggs that some pirates had taken. So, sounds a little bit strange, but um, I guess we should fulfill his last request either way. So, we're gonna, what we're going to do is actually jump in the water and swim over here to the northeastern part. Now, I'm not entirely sure where this is sort of explained. Like, I know somebody somewhere would say that this is where the pirates are. But, um, we're going to come over here because we need to uh, search for the eggs inside of their hideout. And I guess we could be, you know, a little bit fancy if we wanted to do some jumps out of the water here. No, it's not like it matters, but it's fun to do anyway. So as we come over here to the northeastern part, you can see on the map there's a little bit of something sticking out there. And there are these uh, four panels that are sort of covered with, the, you know, the traditional skull and crossbones pirate mark thing. Um, if we have Tattle tell us about it... Hey, hang on, doesn't this look a little strange? Well, kind of. So what we can actually do is swim into them and they will disappear. Of course, there's nothing behind this one, but you can check on the map and see that there is actually sort of a uh, hidden passage in this direction. So if we swim into this... You can see it'll break away, and we can now head in through this opening. Then once we do so, we are going to be taken to the Pirate's Fortress, and this is pretty much Majora's Mask's answer to uh, the Gerudo Fortress in Ocarina of Time. As you can see, they even use the same character, the, the purple Gerudo-looking guards with the big spears, you know? So it's really kind of the same idea. We still need to be sneaking around here, and we still need to avoid getting caught by these, uh, by these gals here. But, um, turns out we actually do have something in our arsenal that will really help us. And we'll get to that later, but for now we just kind of want to wait for the uh, boats to pass on by so we can jump in as Azora. And uh, also, as you're swimming around in here, you'll want to watch out because occasionally those little skull fish will come after you. So, anytime you see one in the distance, just press R and you'll kill it with electricity. But, uh, where we're actually going to go is over here to the very northern part. You can see there's a little piece of land on the map there. So let's just finish killing that and then wait around here for the boats to pass by. They can't see you underwater or anything, so there's no worries there. So let's just wait for her to go on by us here. Whoa, okay. So then once we're clear, we can come up out of the water and head over here to the northeastern part. And you can see there's uh, one of those pillars that we saw back in Stowhead Temple. So what we're going to do is jump on it and we're going to have to get our Goron mask out again. And just pound on the thing. Once you do that, that little grating will opening down there under the water, so that's obviously where we need to go next. And just make sure not to fall in the water as a Goron. I've mentioned it before, I'm pretty sure, but the Goron can't swim, so you know, you don't want to put him in that situation. So we're gonna have to come all the way back around here to the south now. Probably you yeah, have some more skullfish gonna come up. I, I would try to save the magic as much as you can. I don't really know how much we're gonna need it in this place, but using the electricity really does drain it very fast. So it's worth being somewhat cautious anyway. All right, so we can continue swimming on through here and we're gonna see there's another wooden panel we're gonna have to break. And now here we're gonna have a block and it's very important whenever you're moving this that you pull it instead of pushing it. Uh, because when you pull it, that will sort of open up a way through and also through there. If you pushed it, you wouldn't be able to get through there and you'd have to, you know, sort of do this whole thing again. So just keep that in mind. All right, and we can break uh, both of these things. It can be a little bit awkward trying to control Zora Link in these tight quarters, but still not too bad. Then we can come up over here and this time push the block so we can get through. And that will allow us to get through this little middle section here and pass the first block. Now here we've got a little fan that we can ride up on, which is pretty cool. And we're going to have to uh, avoid these mines on the floor. You may think it's a good idea to try to swim over them, and as you can see there's actually a fan right there that's blowing a pretty strong current. If you get trapped in that, it will push you all the way back outside, so your best bet is to just walk along the floor here and avoid the mines. They're really pretty easy. Um, they're not like proximity mines or anything. They don't home in on you, so as long as you don't just run into them, you'll be good here. Okay, and as we go through this door, we're going to be taken to um, another little area here with some more water, of course. You're going to be seeing a lot of water in this place, and a lot of those spiky mines, too. Ooh, there's a chest down here. I actually didn't even know there was. Let's check it out. It's probably just rupees, but I don't know. It might be worth opening anyway. Yeah, red rupees. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Did you notice how happy Link's face looked like Zora Link? I don't think I've ever noticed that before, but 
Um, anyway, you can also see there's a heart piece inside of this cage here, which we can't really seem to get in because this door won't open. So we're going to have to do uh, just one little thing to take care of that. Uh, we're going to come up here. You can see there are a bunch of barrels around, and there are some in a funky little formation here. If we punch them with the Goron, that'll destroy them, and you can see there's a switch underneath. So if we press that, that will open the door to the cage, then quickly turn around and roll your way back into uh, the cage. There we go. You get inside and get the piece of heart. So uh, that is two of our four. Now, you notice the door has closed on us, but of course you can get back out just by pressing that switch. It's pretty simple. And now we're going to make our way back up here. So uh, if we destroy some of these, we can get on out to this ledge. You can see there is actually a crystal switch here. You could use arrows, but that would involve going into the submenu, so I'm just going to use the little boomerang fin things. Uh, that will open up a passage underneath here. So just jump through and get hit by the mine, of course, because I'm horrible at that, and get hit by another one. That's awesome. All right, so then we can go on through this opening and now avoid some more mines. Um, you'll prob your best bet is probably just to swim along the surface here slowly um, and not quickly like I was trying to do, but oh well, I'm just trying to speed things up a little bit, I guess. All right, so let's climb the ladder on the other side then. Now, as we come through here, there is a switch that we can press, which will open the grating leading us to a crystal switch. But before you activate it, you want to stand on this thing and hit it from here. Then once you do that, a water current will rise, and then we can go up into the next room. Now, I'll try not to go up too far there, because uh, you'll have to dodge some mines jumping down if you do that. So, you know, it's probably a good idea to get off, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, but we can climb this ladder over here on the wall. And this will take us up to a little alcove with uh, something pretty interesting in it. We can actually look through here. It's a telescope. And this will kind of let us get a little overview of the uh, place we're going to be doing. As you can see, it does very much resemble, it's sort of like a modernized version of Gerudo's Fortress, really. I mean, there are a bunch of different levels and a bunch of different doors and a few hookshot targets and everything with the Gerudo guards all around. So it really is very much like it, but um, it's actually very, uh, it's actually a lot easier to get around in this game. And you'll see why in a little bit, but uh, for now, let's just quit spying on them and turn around real quick. And uh, now we've got a crystal switch that is just beyond these mines. So what we're going to do is get the bow and arrow out. We might be able to do this with the Zora's boomerang fins, but I just like using the bow and arrow. You can blow up those mines by hitting them together, and then hit the crystal switch, which will open the door. So let's drop down and go through it. All right, so now we're back outside in the starting area, but we're up on a ledge this time. There are some unlit torches here. I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure if something happens if you light them. Is that a treasure chest out there, too? Yeah, looks like it is. But um, Anyway, if, if, you, if there is anything there, it's just rupees or something like that, you know, so I'm not going to bother wasting time with it. Um, so we can go around the corner here, roll up the ramp, and into this doorway. And this is going to take us to the main area, the one that we were just looking at through the telescope. And, of course, a little scene signifies that. So yeah, this place is a little bit complicated, but once we get into it, you'll see it's actually not that bad. Now, if you want, you could just, you know, stay behind these little crates here and sneak around that way. But we have something that's uh, a little bit better. Remember the stone mask. We did just pick that up not too long ago, and it makes us inconspicuous, right? So if we put it on and look really goofy, we can actually run around, and no matter what we do, they will not notice. I mean, you could run into them, you can slash them with a sword and everything, and, and you will not get caught. So, really, the stone mask is very, very helpful. I would advise you get it before going in here. Um, of course, I guess if you really want the challenge, you could try it without it, but I don't know, it just seems needless to me. And uh, also, if we remember, there was that guy who had the seahorse in the fish tank, remember that? Uh, he wanted a picture of a female pirate for whatever dubious reason, so let's, uh, hey, get back here, I'm taking a picture of you. Um, okay, well, I guess that's good enough. It's like an extreme close-up, but um, he did say he wanted the face, right? Well, he's gonna get the face. Okay, so um, let's see. We've got a... Uh, you can see there are some hookshot targets from Ocarina of Time here. We don't quite have the hookshot yet, but I think at this point it's, it's pretty obvious that we're gonna be getting it. So, um, that you know, that's why I don't care to call them hookshot targets, because you know what they are. So really, the uh, best way that we can go right now is to head on up this ladder. There are some stairs that are right in front of us that would get us to a door, but you wouldn't be able to do anything in there yet, uh, which we'll actually soon see. So now we can cross this bridge. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll slash you. Oh, I still can't get by. What's this? Oh, you've got to be kidding. All right, can I, like, backflip over her or something? No? Really? 
Okay, there we go. Just had to squeeze through. That was... <laughs> I've never had that much trouble with her before, but... Okay, so now we can head through the door that's on the other side of the bridge. And we will be taken to this little uh, passage up here. It's kind of hidden in the ceiling. Whoa, holy crap. <laughs> Watch out, Tattle. I want to get stung by that thing, man. Ah, so it looks like we can spy on what's going on down below. I've been waiting for you, and did you find the rest of the eggs? No, but that's because... What are you trying to pull here? If people hear the great pirates have lost the treasure they stole, we'll become the laughing stock. Yes, but Avail, the sea is strangely murky where we were attacked by the sea snakes. Silence! Oh, jeez. That's why the Zoras can't send for any help. Now that the eggs are gone, the Zoras should be frantically searching for them. If we don't hurry, the Zoras will get to them before we do. There are four eggs here now. Hurry, go find the other three eggs before those sea snakes eat them. Understood. Wait! The Zora eggs are the only clue we have about that dragon cloud floating over the bay. If what that strange mask one says is true, and if we can get our hands on the treasure that lies sleeping in the temple in that dragon cloud, then we can spend the rest of our lives living the good life. So then get a move on and go find them, now! Understood! Ah, I gotta do a little motivation there, you didn't want her to be all mopey, did ya? Alright, so yeah, we can check uh, this place out. Tattle's gonna tell us a little bit here. We have a good view of their leader's room from here. And I bet if you needed to, you could shoot an arrow through these bars. So that's kind of a little hint, but it's not entirely obvious what we need to shoot at. Because, you know, we can't really look down. You, can, you can't really even see anybody, but the hive was pointed out very, very obviously in the middle of the scene. So I would say that's what we need to do. So we can shoot an arrow through here. You don't have to worry about aiming through the bars. It'll go through them anyway. So, uh, <laughs> they get all freaked out and run from the bees, which I don't blame them. I would probably be doing the same if there were, like, three or four angry bees chasing me, but... <laughs> okay, and that will clear out that room, which is a pretty important thing to do, because we're going to have to go in there and pick up something. Um, I've always wondered, is there anything around this corner? I'll just some pots. <laughs> probably with arrows. Yeah, I figured as much, because you need them to do that, but... All right, so now that we've cleared out that room, we're going to be able to uh, head down there and pick up the prize that's inside. So, uh, she also mentioned that they don't quite have all of the eggs here. So, uh, they only have four that we need to pick up, and that's why I recommended you bring four bottles, because that's what you're going to have to put them in, as you'll soon see. But, um, if you don't have four bottles at this point, you're going to have to, like, get some and then leave and then come back and get some more, and it would just be really annoying. But, anyway, the door down there is, uh, just in the room that we were spying on here, and, uh, there's a very obvious treasure chest, so let's open it up. And I don't think anyone's surprised when we have found the hookshot. Use it to grapple items so you can reel them in, or pull yourself over to them. Uh, press C to arm it, and all that stuff. Right. Okay, so, yeah, it was pretty much screaming that we were going to get the hookshot, so here's the hookshot. Um, we're going to be using it pretty much right away. There's a tank here that's got this uh, egg-looking thing in it, and, well, we need to be collecting eggs, so we're obviously going to have to... Let's take off that stupid mask. It looks ridiculous. Um, so what you probably want to do is hookshot yourself over to the edge of the tank. Probably not a good idea to just jump in the water because that thing will, uh, you know, like hit your feet with its butt or something. So I like to drop in and then just dive down with the Zora or climb up. That's awesome too. Okay, yeah, see, the, it can be a little bit weird. The diving doesn't seem to take effect, like, as soon as possible. So, yeah, now we're going to have to do a little bit of awkward combat here. Uh, so just wait for it to open up, get a little bit of distance from it, then punch, and that'll take care of it. So, we got hit a couple times needlessly, but that's alright. And then we can use one of our bottles to scoop up the egg, and that is the first of the four that's in the pirate's hideout. So, it doesn't look very healthy, you better have someone examine it quick. Ah, it'll be fine. Alright, so now we can climb on out of the fish tank there, and head our way back over to the door. And back out to the main area. So we're pretty much going to have to just uh, scour the place for the next three eggs. And they're, of course, going to be in all these different parts on all these different levels. So it can be a little bit confusing getting around, but um, it, it ends up not being too bad. But anyway, this looks like a pretty good place to stop. I'm actually going to uh, get out of Zora when we put on that stone mask. I don't want that guard on the bridge seeing me or anything, so we'll just play it safe here. But 
Um, okay, so next time we're going to finish looking around the pirate's hideout in order to find the other three Zora eggs. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.